Hey guys, Red Spartan here. So there's a lot of new players coming to Breach. There's the Alpha opening up. There's also the release that's going to happen near the end of January for Breach. So in this video, I just wanted to talk about all the roles and what each role is supposed to do in this game. And from there, you guys can decide where you want to go and what you want to be. Don't forget, though, that you can mix and match all the classes as long as they're in the same school and you can make your own class. These are just the staple for what each class is gonna be. What, so let's, if we talk about the Lich, it's what he's gonna do with his with his staple of skills that he gets off the bat. Also guys, don't forget, um, if you guys could hit that subscribe button, it would mean a lot to me. That would be awesome. It just shows that I'm doing something that's worthwhile, that you guys wanna see future content. It means a lot to me, but let's jump right into this and let's talk about all these roles. <laughs> All right, guys, so let's talk about the assassins right off the bat. These are the guys that are going to do the most damage. They're still going to have utility to be able to banish, stun, or root. But at, at the core of their mechanics, they're going to do the most damage. So we got a couple of these that are in the same school. So we got the Nighthawk and the Assassin. They're both in the same school. If you want to mix and match their skills, you can. They're still going to have their signature skill for what they are. You can't change that out but you could still mix and match everything else. We also got the Gunslinger and the Sniper. Those two are also in the same school. You can't change out their signature skill, once again, but you can mix and match what you like and what you don't like between them. You got the Arrows Gladiator and the Demon Hunter, the Lich. These guys are in different schools, but you could still do as much damage with these as, as possible. Um, you can still mix and match what they got from the other areas that are not in the assassin branch because they're in the same school. So like for the Lich, you can mix in some Necromancer stuff. The Necromancer is a specialist, but we'll get onto that later on. But I just want to talk about these guys in general. So Arrow's Gladiator and the Nighthawk, they both utilize knocking the enemy up in the sky and then doing combinations while they're stuck in this mini stun lock in the air. These guys can't mix and match their abilities i wish they could it makes more sense since they both pretty much have the same mechanic but they're both in different schools so you cannot mix what they have together the lich does a lot of damage you could definitely do a lot with the lich the gunslinger is going to be and the sniper are going to be your far away dps people they're going to be the people that stand back and do the damage from afar um the sniper does have a lot more as far as one hit wonders as the gunslinger is more about attacking as fast as possible from afar. All right, guys, now let's talk about the specialists. These guys bring a special set of skills to the table, if you will. Um, each one has its own purpose, and they're going to excel in certain things against certain demon veils, but mostly they're going to be very niche. They're still going to work no matter what, especially since you can mix and match their skills within their school. I can't stress that point enough. Each class is your own class, but I'm talking about the classes as they are and what skills they bring to the table and where those skills fall in. So let's talk about the Chronomancer. The Chronomancer is all about slows and he is definitely going to bring down the NPCs in a way where they're easy for the DPS and the tank to control them easier. So his ultimate alone slows down the whole room itself by like, I want to say like 90%, maybe even 95%. It's quite ridiculous, especially when you got ultimate reduction and skills that are going to bring that, that table up as far as the cooldown and how fast you're going to obtain your ultimate. He's definitely is if you utilize around the ultimate of the Chronomancer, he's definitely really, really good, especially for each room. Um, the engineer has a lot of roots and poles and stuns, and he has a kin kinetic field that is going is going to entrap people in a certain area. The Exorcist is, I would say, he if I want to talk about the Exorcist as far as being very niche, he is definitely going to do a lot of damage against a Taskmaster. Demon Veil. The the Exorcist is going to take monsters and make it so the Demon Veil can't make them stronger than he already has. He, and if the Demon Veil is controlling them, the Exorcist is able to expel the Demon Veil from controlling whoever he's controlling. So like 
and a lot of demon veils have power ups where if they're controlling a monster, they actually increase something about the monster in some way. Exorcist is able to completely just negate that, and that's really a niche thing. Um, I could see bringing an exorcist that is has a special set of skills in other areas that he pulls from the other classes in his school and then still having like the expel and stuff like that to, just to make sure that the taskmaster isn't or demon veil in general isn't overpowering the creeps or NPCs or whatever you want to call them. So the necromancer as far as being a niche I would have to say the necromancer is fun has a lot of damage also. Uh, definitely controls the battlefield. It can be both good and bad. Some rooms you want to get all the monsters together and in one area so you guys can kill them as fast as you can. Typically these are the rooms where you got to kill the monsters uh, in a certain amount of time. The Necromancer can dwindle this down, hence this kind of makes them into a specialist because they got to know how to control how many undead they have and to know which room to overutilize it and to underutilize it. So the Necromancer's good but it still can he can hurt you uh in certain ways all right now let's move on to the support class so i actually have a guide out there for mixing the arcane render and the elementalist together um it utilizes the shield and the aoe res and then with these two together it does a lot of damage as long as you're doing these like non-stop but if you guys want to check that out i'll put the link down below that's another video you guys could easily check out and kind of get some guides and some insight as to where these classes can go so we got the arcane mender the elementalist which are both in the same school which is why that guide works the occultist and the vanguard the support class is going to be about cleansing your team healing your team keeping them alive the occultist actually does a decent job doing damage and slowing um but all these guys mostly is all they're all about just keeping your team alive being that person that everyone can call on if they need you like hey i need some heals right now hey, they're gonna be there to support your team obviously that's why they're in the category of support um but there's really not much to say as far as these guys. They're going to support you guys. All right, guys. So let's talk about the warrior slash tank class. These guys are pretty user-friendly. They're able to self-sustain themselves. If the I would have to say if the dungeon didn't have a demon veil, uh, setting up traps or empowering NPCs, these guys typically would be able to get through the dungeon by themselves. They, it might take some time, but still they have very high self-sustain. Also, they're... Their signature ability alone has impact resistance and plus health and then plus dodge. So by their own, they're going to be tanky. The Bloodstalker is able to life leech a lot. Her ultimate increases her attack speed and life leech. And I think she has some abilities where if she, she does it to multiple different guys. She's able to life leech off of multiple different guys or life leech off one guy while she's attacking another guy. Um, that just brings in a lot of life leech. They all have taunts in some sort of way the mana warrior is able to take a percentage of his health and make it into a shield while still keeping that percentage of health um he also has a lot of taunts the reaper also has a life leech slash like healing of himself kind of abilities uh, I would have to say the Mana Warrior is your typical upfront taunting everyone, like beefy guy. Your Bloodstalker is going to be like your dodgy life leech tank. Um, and then your Reaper is going to be that AoE damage, uh, AoE kind of annoyance kind of tank. They all are in different schools, so you're not able to utilize their skills together. The Bloodstalker is in like uh, sh the Shadow School. The Mana Warrior is in the Battle School, and the Reaper is in the Dark School. So they're not able to utilize each other's skills, but these are definitely your guys that you're going to self-sustain and stay alive by yourself. If you don't have a healer or if your healer is not able to keep up, these guys are going to kind of go through it with ease. All right, guys. Well, I hope this video helped you guys decipher where you possibly wanted to go, um, what class you probably already had in mind, what you wanted to do, and then where that class falls into. I didn't want to go too far into each class because I didn't want to make this video really, really long. I just wanted to talk about each branch as far as assassin support specialist and tank also you guys don't forget to subscribe and then also follow me on twitch i will be streaming this game 
as well every time I get the chance. Um, when the game is fully released, I'm hoping to possibly give away some copies of this game as well. But please just hit that subscribe button, like, leave a comment down below on where your favorite class is and why their favorite class, or if you want to mix certain skills to make a certain class better in a certain field. Um, that would be awesome. <laughs>